All right, guys, I got a box of locks from Wes and the Dudes. And these would be the Dudes. It's a soft surveillance detachment. So I'll leave it to your imagination why they want to know how to quickly get through a bunch of these locks. This first one I grabbed is a digi lock. And by the way, they are over in PACOM or Pacific Command. So this is typically, I guess, one of the locks they run into. Um, let me show you how this works because I had never seen one of these before. Um, it's made in Japan. Uh, it's pretty solid spring return on that shackle. And so at first I thought I was going to be able to uh, shim it open. But that wasn't the case and I'll show you why in just a minute. It does come with a little combination. It is not changeable. So we got 13, 58. And you have a, a total of 10 of these push buttons on the front. So dial in, what was it again? 13, 58, right? One, three, five, eight. Now you notice when you push them, those buttons remain in the down position. And when you got them down, then you push this little lever and voila, we got a little open. Now the buttons, look, they did stay down. They didn't pop back up. And we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But before we do that, let's look inside of the lock. Um, there is a squared off piece that fits right into that cutout on the shackle. Uh, so if the fact that it's squared off means we couldn't shim it, but we couldn't shim it anyway because there's a mechanical link between that locking pawl and this lever. Notice the lever is still in, in the rightmost position. So when we lock it back up, watch what happens. I'm going to push it in and the lever will then return. Get, line it up, Bill. Line it up. Returns to its position and now we're locked. Now, of course, the buttons are still pushed. We can push it back open if we want to, but... Let's lock it up. So we push it back in, and now we're stuck with those buttons. We'll flip it over, and there's another button on the on the back. It's a push pad. So we're going to push that pad, and when we do, all the buttons go back. So you got to remember to do that if this is going to be one of your locks. So the first thing I'd do, Wes, uh, check to make sure the person didn't forget. Secondly, this is thin chrome on these buttons. Look at the buttons that are worn and very likely be able to detect which are the four buttons to get into this thing. Uh, I did try picking it, and the way I, would, I logically thought was apply tension to that little lever and then feel which ones were bound. And unfortunately, the slightest pressure on that lever because it's a mechanical link it seizes up all of the buttons. So you're not going to be able to pick push button wise. Um, you have an opening there. So I took my probe and I felt around the side of there, nothing. There's no, there may be something in there. I don't know yet. We're going to take a look in just a minute. But I couldn't detect anything with a probe uh, in there that might help release this lever. Um, when you flip it over on the back, first of all, there is a roll pin. I would imagine the roll pin secures the left side of the shackle here, that's the side that remains in the lock. I don't think removing that, and it would be easy to do, you drive a screw in there and pull it out. I don't think it's going to help you. So then I took a probe and started feeling around the edge of this button. There's a crack there that you can kind of squeeze into. And right away, as soon as I touched that probe in there, I got to notice this little thing is made from plastic. And it will come up. So let's do that. And this is as far as I got. Um, I was afraid to go any further. I did pry this off. And it's held in place by two little arms, and they have little notches on them to get caught, and a spring, which causes it to return. And there's all your push buttons. When you look on the back, when you push it through, of course, they rise up on the inside there. So take a look at the center there. Now, you notice we'd have little torques. Uh, it's a Torx, and you're seeing these more and more commonly. This is what's called a security Torx. Uh, it's like a regular Torx, but there's a hole, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a hole in the, mo in the middle of it. Most modern Torx bits are now coming with that hole already in them. There may be some of the old ones that don't, but if not, I got a whole bunch of these security bits on eBay for $13. And inside of there was the right size of the security Torx. I have not done this, so I have no idea from this point forward what's going to happen. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here in case something comes springing out. Now, I realize when you guys open these locks, you want to access it and then you want to put them back. So let's try to do that without destroying anything. All right, so far so good. Okay, it looks like there is some kind of Loctite, but I didn't need a handle or anything. I did it with my fingers just using it on the bit. It was, ugh, that's what I'm talking about. 
All right, so guys, when you do it, make sure well, it's open. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> when you remove that screw, make sure you're with your finger, either you wrap a tape around it or you hold your hand on it. You probably, if I'd been a little more self-aware, I probably could have gotten away with that. It looks like these guys are all still in place. I do have a locking bar. I don't have any clue where that went, unfortunately. And there were two springs that popped out on me. This is the guy that probably was right in the middle that pushed things apart so violently. But anyway, you can get in there. Uh, let's take a look at the lever. You notice that lever moves. Let's take these guys and dump them. Ah, good, they don't dump. Great. Okay, you see the notches that they're, those guys are in? And when you push them to the right depth, there's a little gap that will allow that lever to turn. So you see one of them has a notch, that one, and the others do not. So I've already sprung it open. So what was it again? One, three, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this upside down since the spring are off one. Yeah, definitely not. Now we can dump everything. Always helps to have more than one sample, guys. Help me figure this out. All right, let me find one tooth that has the cutout and one that does not. Okay, there's one with a notch and the rest of them do not. Here's one of the ones that will, when you push it to the right depth, it'll allow that locking ring to rotate. And then the locking ring has these little notches that will then slide through that gate. So there's four of them. you got to figure out which they are. Tensioning that does not work. It seizes up the entire works. Anyway, getting into it is easy enough. It just may not be quite as surreptitious as you hope. Anyway, fellas, I wish that had been a little bit neater. I had really no clue that it was going to spring apart like that. Anyway, Wes and the dudes. I'll see what I can do about getting the rest of those locks in that box. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, guys, especially over there.